Hello, AP Physics One. It's Mr. Ng uh, with the first page of your Momentum 2 packet. And here, um, this page just wants you to graph the momentum of these two cars. And before we go into anything else, I need to clarify uh, the types of graphs. A lot of us, we do these exercises and you'll randomly do a line graph or you'll randomly do a bar graph. And it's not based off any sort of understanding. So um, I think you're not looking at the x-axis. So here, let me clearly describe the difference between a line graph and a bar graph. When do you use what? So um, a line graph has what's called continuous or contiguous data, all right? This is data that is infinite, it goes forever. And this is data that is also infinite in between, like, like time. Uh, think about how time can go on forever. More so, you could go from one second to two seconds, but you could go 1.5 seconds, 1.55 seconds, 1.555, right? Continuous, infinite data goes on a line graph, right? usually for scatter plots. But then when we do bar graphs, this is when the x-axis uh, has discrete data. Discrete data being uh, little baskets, t-shirt A, t-shirt B, t-shirt C. That is not an infinite thing. You don't have um, you know, t-shirts in between, right? Different categories, cats, dogs, horses, right? There's no such thing as a cat-dog combo, or is there? I don't know, right? So discrete data. And here, um, our x-axis is going to be these masses. That's it. That's a discrete type of data that you don't get to change that mass. There's no, they're not changing the mass of this car. So here, for these graphs, we're going to do bar graphs. So um, let's sketch the initial momentum of the car. So we're, it's going backwards, right? It's going backwards. So I'm gonna make it go backwards, right? Let's just assume that, and it's a number line. If you go this way, it's positive. It's that way, it's negative. So the initial momentum of the car is down. And I look how I made it 1M, right? And then let's just choose a random even number. Let's see, two, four, six. Six seems right. Right, two, four, six, and then that's it, done. Right, a mass of one, a velocity of six, total momentum of six, fine. And then the car's final speed is uh, V over two in the opposite direction. So now it's in the positive direction. So you're in the car. So here, again, the mass is one, and now it's gonna be three this way, right? Positive versus negative, good. So now let's think about the truck's momentum. The truck starts with um, a mass of three, one, two, three, but it's all at zero because it's not moving. And now what is, the ma uh, what is the velocity of the truck? This is where the math comes in. And it's pretty simple math. Look, we, we blocked out or we colored in six blocks here. There's three here. Momentum's conserved. The final three has to be with this here truck, right? So here, that means the truck has to have um, nine, right? For the whole sum of this to be underneath here and six. So here, one, two, three, right? And now we're gonna go down like this. And this thing must be nine. Why? Look, positive three, and negative nine sums up to negative six. Does that make sense? Just, just dealing with the, um, the conservation of momentum here. Part B of this question wants us to go through some system thinking. It asks, how does the situation change if the system is only the car, right? Meaning in the last question, we consider both the car and the truck and when the system is um, both bodies in the, in the collision, the system is conserved, right? But now, um, in part B, we just want to consider the car. And we know that the momentum is not conserved there. Why? Well, because initially um, it went six, right? Let's see, two, here's six, right? Initially it went six, and then finally it went to three. So the, the momentum is completely different. So where is the change in momentum? Where's that impulse? That impulse 
is the step that's uh, applied to the car. So here is negative six. It ends up being positive three. So it needs to have an impulse of nine, right? And we know it's the same shape as the as the truck, right? So here, right? Notice that it's the exact same uh, momentum as uh, the prior graph, but now it's just positive, right? Because it's an external impulse applied to the car, right? Finally, when you get to part C, um, I bet a lot of you um, feel like you understand this because we're talking about um, dropping things onto foam and feathers. And I think we all remember our lesson where um, if we have less time, the max force is really high. And if we have more time, the max force is really low. That's fine. That's good. Um, the one thing that I don't think many of you would have gotten is uh, this part where uh, it wants you to understand what quantities need to be graphed to exhibit a straight line. Here's the thing. So um, our current equation is momentum is equal to force times time or change of momentum is equal to force times change in time. But our two variables is going to be f and t. So we want f to be the y and t to be the x. So if we rearrange it, f is equal to delta p over delta t, where the f is the y and the delta t is the x. Is this a straight line? All right. What quantities need to be graphed to exhibit a straight line relationship? Is this a straight line? The answer is no. Right. This is uh, basically y is equal to 1 over x. This is not a straight line. This is a logarithmic graph. So the only way for you to make it a straight line is to plot f versus not delta t, but 1 over delta t. This is an exercise that we've done a lot, how to uh, linearize your graph, right? So here, if we graph f versus 1 over delta t, then you will get a straight line. And look at very clearly um, exhibits the relationship where if time is bigger, then force gets smaller. Good. And then uh, please go through and very slowly make sure that you state something that's always true, right? In this case, it's going to be the, uh, um, the equation for impulse. And then go through and do that transfer where you use the right vocabulary and apply it to a specific situation. But the one part that many of you would have missed is how to linearize that graph. Thank you very much for watching.